Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be covering a highly requested topic which is rendering GUIs. This is actually a lot simpler than you might think. All we really need to do here is to render some 2D quads with textures on them and that's something that we did all the way back in episode 6. So all we're going to be doing in this episode is to create another rendering system that can render 2D textured quads. I'm going to be going fairly quickly in this tutorial and not explaining quite as much as usual because there's almost no new concepts here and we've basically already done all this code before anyway, but if there is anything that you don't understand then do leave me a comment or send me an email and I'll help you out as soon as possible. So let's get started in the code, so let's create a new package which we're going to call GUIs and in here we're going to create a class that represents a GUI, a GUI texture and I'm going to call that GUI texture. And a GUI texture needs of course a texture, that will be a texture ID. Um, it's also going to need a position on the screen and it will also need a 2D vector which is a scale because we're going to have an X and a Y scale. And now we're just going to go to source and generate constructor from fields to generate a simple constructor and we'll also generate some getters, no need for setters here. For now, the 2D position represents the center of the quad in the OpenGL coordinate system, and the scale represents the X and Y size of the quad in relation to the size of the screen. So we're going to be rendering our GUIs onto quads, which means that we need to create a quad model. Hopefully you'll remember that we use the load to VAO method in the loader class to load up model data into VAOs, which we can then render, and we're going to need to do the same with the quad. So we could use this method here, but it would be a bit excessive for what we need. We don't need to store any normals in the quads VAO because we're obviously not going to do any lighting calculations with the GUIs. We're not going to be needing any indices because we'll be rendering using GL Draw Arrays, which is what we used to render our quad back in episode 2. And although we are going to be texturing our quad, we don't actually need to store the texture coordinates in the VAO because we can easily work them out in the shaders. We're only going to be rendering a quad, so it's pretty easy to calculate their texture coordinates from the vertex positions. So we're not going to be using this method to create our VAO, we're going to be making a new method. So under that first method we're going to create the new method and we're just going to call it exactly the same thing, load to VAO, and unlike the first method this one just takes in one float array which is the positions of the vertices. So first off we'll create a VAO just like before and we'll get the ID of that VAO. Uh, then in attribute 0 of this VAO we're going to store the 2D coordinates, just X and Y this time, uh, which are the positions of the vertices. Then we're going to unbind the VAO because we're finished storing stuff in it, and then we can return the raw model which takes in the VAO's ID, and it also needs to know the number of vertices which we can get by doing positions.length divided by 2, because of course each vertex position is 2 floats, an X and a Y. Let's now start work on the rendering system for our GUIs, and we'll start off with a GUI renderer class. In here, let's create a constructor, and this is going to take in the loader, because the first thing that we're going to do is to create the quad VAO that we're going to be using to render all of our GUI textures onto. We don't need to create a new VAO for each GUI, because we can just use the same quad model each time and move it and scale it around the screen using a transformation matrix. So we'll create a final variable here which is the quads model and it's final because it's never going to change. We now need to decide on the positions of the vertices of our quad and we're just going to create a quad that fills up the whole screen which with the OpenGL coordinate system would mean that these are the vertex positions. Now, usually when we're rendering triangles, we have to specify the three vertex positions for each triangle, giving a total of six vertex positions for a quad. But we're going to be rendering using something called triangle strips. With triangle strips, you just have to specify the first triangle's vertices as normal, but then for every new vertex that you specify, it automatically creates a new triangle between that vertex and the previous two vertices. So for our quad, we specify the vertex positions for the first triangle as normal, 
and then we just have to specify the position of that final vertex and it will automatically create that last triangle. So we now only need four vertex positions instead of six and this here is our final position array that we'll send off to the load to VAO method. So copy down those positions very carefully and then use that load to VAO method that we just created to load up the quad model like this. Now we need to program a render method so let's do that down here, create a new method called render and that's going to take in a list of all the GUI textures that we want to render. And the first thing we want to do is we want to bind the model of the quad because we want to render all of our GUIs onto that same quad. So bind the VAO, the quad's VAO, and we also need to enable attribute zero of that VAO because that's where we stored the positions. Then under here we're going to eventually do the rendering, we'll do that in a minute, but let's not forget after that we need to disable attribute zero of the VAO and we then need to unbind the VAO once we're finished using it to render. So we can do that by doing gl bind vertex array and putting in a zero. So let's do the rendering code now, we're going to just loop through that list of GUI textures so that we can render each GUI and for now all we're going to do is we're just going to call gl draw arrays so we're just going to draw that quad onto the screen and we're going to use gl triangle strips this time uh, gl triangle strip instead of gl triangles then we put in the first index which is just going to be zero and then we put in the number of uh, vertices which we can get by doing quad.getVertex count. So let's test out what we've done so far. In the main game loop you need to create a new list of GUI textures and then you need to create a GUI texture like this, loading up whatever texture you want to render and then choosing the positions and sizes of your image. It doesn't actually matter what values you put in there now but it will do later. Don't forget to add the GUI into the list and then you also need to create a GUI renderer like this. Then in the while loop, after all of the 3D stuff has rendered, you can render your GUIs by calling GUI renderer dot render and put in the list of your GUIs. And if we run that, you will probably get something like this. You'll either have a white or black quad completely covering the screen as it should. However, some systems do require a shader program to be used to render anything, so if your quad isn't rendering at this stage then don't worry too much because it might still be fine. But let's now go back into the code and actually add a shader program. So in the GUI package create a GUI shader class and I've actually put a link in the description of this video so that you can download all of the code for this class because we've done this code so many times that there's really no need for you to have to program it all again. I've also provided vertex and fragment shader code because again it's all stuff that we've done before so download those files and put them into your GUIs folder in your project source folder. And then just refresh your package here so that they show up. So have a look through the code, it should all be very obvious what's going on. In the GUI shader, all we're doing is specifying the location of the shader files and loading them up as usual. Down here we're binding attribute 0 of the VAO to the position variable in the vertex shader like always. And then we have one uniform variable, the transformation matrix, which we're getting the location of as per usual. And we've also got a method to load up a transformation matrix. The vertex shader code is as simple as it possibly could be. We get the vertex positions from the VAO and then we just render the vertex at that position on the screen. And notice how we have to set the Z coordinate to zero here because if you remember we only loaded up an X and Z position coordinate this time. We've got the transformation matrix uniform here which we're not actually using yet but we will be using that later. And here we're calculating the texture coordinates to send to the fragment shader and if you have a look at this diagram hopefully that conversion should make perfect sense. Remember that for textures 00, 0 is the top left corner and 11 one one is the bottom right. So we now need to actually use that shader program when we're rendering. So in the GUI renderer we now need a GUI shader and we're just going to initialize it 
in the GUI renderers constructor. So create a new GUI shader that we can now use when we're rendering. Before we go any further, we need to definitely add a cleanup method uh, because the shader needs to be cleaned up. So we're going to call that from the main game loop eventually. And now before we render, we of course need to start the GUI shader. And once we're finished rendering, we can stop the GUI shader. And in here, we of course need to bind the texture that we want to use. Because now that we can render textures because we've got the shader set up, we need to bind the texture. So let's activate uh, texture bank, uh, texture unit zero. And then let's bind the texture that we want to use to texture unit zero. And we can do that by calling GL bind texture. The texture type is of course a GL texture 2D. And the texture ID we can get from the GUI, GUI.get texture. So now in the main game loop, let's not forget we need to clean up the GUI renderer first. So put that in there, GUI renderer.cleanup. And now we can test that out. And as you can see, I've got a logo there that someone actually sent in to me for my game, for my Soccer One game. And it's rendering nicely onto the screen there, so that's all working fine. But what we need to do now is to be able to scale and move that logo or that GUI on the screen so we can place it wherever we want and we can have it whatever size we want. Uh, so we need to do some work with a transformation matrix. In the maths class, we're going to need a method that can create a transformation matrix from a 2D position and a 2D scale. And you can download the code for this method from the description of this video if you want. It's nothing new, we're just translating and scaling the matrix like we did before. And you could even add a rotation in here if you think you'll ever need to rotate your GUIs. Uh, but I wanted to keep it simple for now. So let's go back into the GUI renderer now and we need to create a transformation matrix for each GUI and then we can load that matrix up to the shader. So for each GUI, create a transformation matrix using that method we just did and put in the position and the scale of the GUI and then you can load up that matrix to the shaders by doing shader.load transformation and put in the matrix. And of course in the GUI vertex shader we need to apply that transformation to each vertex by multiplying in the transformation matrix. So let's now test that out. In the main game loop those position and scale values will now matter. So you can see here that I've chosen a position of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and a size of 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So that will look something like this in the game. And if we go ahead and actually run that, you can see that it is all working as expected. So we're almost done now, but there are still a couple of small things left to do. Firstly, most of this logo is actually meant to be transparent, so we need to enable transparency. We can render the transparency in a texture by using alpha blending. We didn't do this in the transparency tutorial, and I explained why that was back in that tutorial. But those problems don't really apply here because we're just rendering flat 2D quads. So in the GUI renderer class again, let's enable alpha blending. And we can do that by doing GL enable and then putting in GL blend. So that enables it. And now we have to tell it what kind of blending we want to do. And I'll explain this, I'm sure, in a future tutorial. But for now, uh, we just want to put in here... Uh, GL blend func and then we put in GL source alpha and then for the destination we put GL one minus source alpha and I'll explain that in a future devlog you don't have to worry about it too much for now but for now just know that we've enabled alpha blending and then after we've finished rendering the GUIs we need to disable it again because we don't want it going all the time so GL disable GL blend and if we run that and have a look, we can see that that has now worked and the transparency on the logo is working perfectly, which is great. However, if we add another GUI texture to be rendered and if it overlaps with the first texture, then you'll see that we have a bit of a problem. OpenGL is testing that this texture is behind the other texture and so it shouldn't be rendered at all. We need to tell OpenGL to stop testing the depths and we can do this in the GUI renderer class by simply disabling the depth test like this. And don't forget to enable it again after we've finished rendering all of the GUIs because we need to have it enabled when we render our 3D stuff. 
So if we run that, it should all now be working fine. And as you can see, the two GUIs are now overlapping correctly. And the order that they're rendered in depends on their order in the list. So if I swap these two around and add this one to the list first and run that, you can see that they are now rendered the other way round. So that is it for this week. I know I was going a bit faster than usual, but it's only because it was basically all code that we've done before. I'm not sure yet what we'll be doing next week, but I'm sure it will be something riveting, so look forward to that. If you didn't see yesterday's devlog video, then do give that a watch. I was giving a tour of the town this week, as well as showing off the new animation system. You can get in contact with me via my Facebook or Twitter pages, links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a brilliant week, and I will see you all next time.